We are called to imitate our heavenly Father and walk in his love. When we abide in the Father's love, we move in union with God. We're actually moving in God and through God and God is moving in and through us. This is a very powerful place to live and operate out of. This morning we are continuing our study on the Father's love. It's our last message in the series, uh, part 6 in the series next Sunday. Uh, hopefully you will have this entire series in a book form we've already sent it to the printers uh, so it should get in print and it should be out next sunday and we put it in, in like a little study form so you can actually study this what we want you to do is to take as many copies of it as you can next sunday and give it with your christmas gifts right so as you give gifts to your friends or you just give it away as a gift let people know that there's a god in heaven who loves them that there's a father in heaven who loves them so we've uh we've uh, we really want to get it out to you next Sunday so you could use it along uh in this in this Christmas season to share about the father's love now what i want to do is just quickly review and then we will bring this this whole series to a close uh, as we talk about the father's love uh two important statements we've been repeating is that your revelation of god affects your relationship with god so it's important to have a bible a clear a scriptural revelation of god to know who god really is so that you and i can then relate to him based on truths based on who he really is i learn to relate to him correctly so we don't take wrong postures before god now that relationship with god also affects our relationship with other people when your relationship with god is good and strong out of that you and i receive strength to relate to one another uh, with a clear heart the clean heart and be able to uh, freely love each other so this 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 whole teaching on the father's love is so important that it affects both our relationship with god and also our relationship with each other let's just quickly review these uh, the five messages we've covered so far we talked about infinite god our heavenly father where this great god of this universe has chosen to be our father and have us as his sons and daughters. He didn't have to do it, but he chose to do it. Even before the foundation of the world, he chose us that we would be adopted and made his sons and daughters. This was part of his plan. In part 2 we talked about his immeasurable love. That really the God's love is so uh, there is no measure. Uh, there is no way to really fully describe um, the love that God has for us. It's immeasurable. But God wants you and me to be deeply rooted and securely grounded in this love so that nothing should shake us uh, nothing that we face in life should cause you to doubt that the father loves you amen he wants us to be securely ground rooted and grounded in that love part 3 we talked about our heavenly father's true picture a few descriptors of who our god is and part 4 we talked about receiving his love uh, uh that we need to open up our hearts and say god i receive that love we have known and believed that god is love we have known we believe that the love that god has for us and god is love so we talked about that last sunday we talked about abiding in the father's the father's love living out of that place where you're resting in his love and operating out of that love we concluded last sunday uh where in this whole context of the father's love there is also the father's loving discipline so he loves us but as a loving father he also disciplines us and then you know uh, and the writer of hebrews in hebrews 12 he uses three words he talks about god chastening us uh god rebuking us and god scourging us now these are old english words they sound very hard but literally when you look at the greek and put it in modern day english the word chasten means to train up like how you train children so child training so god trains us or he teaches us the word rebuke means to correct as how one would correct if someone is off track you know you correct them hey do it like this and the word scourge is to discipline so there are times when a little discipline is required hey get us back on track all right god deals with it and all of this is done in love he's doing he does it as a father deals with his children but that's part of abiding in his love we need to receive that so in this concluding message we want to talk about imitating 
of a heavenly father. In, so God wants his love in us and through us. In Ephesians 5, we'll begin there, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, or as beloved children, dear children, beloved children. You be imitators of God. So imitate your Heavenly Father. You're a beloved son or a daughter of God. Imitate your Heavenly Father. And the first thing he says in that whole process of, of imitating is, and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself up as a sweet smelling savor, an aroma that's well pleasing to God. So he says, imitate God. How do you do it? Walk in love in the same way Christ also loved us. So God, our heavenly father, he not only invites us to receive his love. He says, look, I want you to do what I'm done for you. I want you to love others the way I have loved you. And when you and I walk in love, that is a, 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 a sweet aroma to God. It's a sacrifice. It is an offering that's well-pleasing to God. So walking in love is your act of worship to God. It's something that you are offering up to God whenever you and I choose to walk in the love of God towards people, towards one another. And so we want to talk about that. We want to share a few insights on that. Walking in love is walking the more excellent path. It's very interesting in 1 Corinthians, we begin in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 30, 31, where the Apostle Paul in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, he's described to us about the gift of the Holy Spirit He's, he's talked about the functions each people have in the body. So there are the gifts we use to serve. Each one of us has a function in the body. We are different functions. We all do different things in the body. But then he says in chapter 12, verse 31, he says, Earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show to you a more excellent way. Or I show you a much better way, is what he said. So, in as much as we serve one another with the gifts and with the functions that we have in the body, there is a much better way to serve people, is what he's saying. A much greater way, a much better way by which we can serve people. And then he gets into chapter 13. Now, of course, when he wrote it, he didn't write it in chapter and verse. We, we are using that as a reference. He, we go to chapter 13, we're going to read the entirety of First Corinthians 13 to understand what he's saying. He says... Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing." And then he describes what the God kind of love is. Love suffers long, is kind, does not envy, does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether there are tongues, they will cease, whether... Whether there is knowledge, it will all vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. We'll read also chapter 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. So what, what are we seeing here? 
the Apostle Paul, after he's, he's described to us the gift of the Spirit, described to us the functions in the body, he says, I want to show you a much better way by which we can serve people. And then he talks to us about love, the God kind of love. And here are some of the things he points us to. He says, look, you, even if we operate in all the gifts, even if we operate in great faith, even if we do great deeds of charity, of, of compassion, to the point where we even give our body to be burned, but if all of that is not motivated, guided, and governed by the God kind of love, all of that means nothing. And that's serious. That means there is one thing must be, that must be top priority. The first thing is the God kind of love. The first thing. Let this motivate you. Let this guide you. Let this govern what you're doing. It's the love of God. And after that, motivated, guided, and governed by love, exercise the gifts Fulfill your ministry functions. Do all of that. So he's not saying don't be engage in ministry functions. Because in chapter 14 verse 1 he does say pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So he gets back to telling us you need to use the gift. So we, we're not uh, totally discarding the gifts of the spirit. We're not totally discarding the functions in the body. But the point is this. The motivation must be the love of if the love of God is not our motivation, God's love for people, that if that is not the motivation, then the expression of the gifts, the operation of the functions, all that, he says, it profits nothing, has no benefits. Amen? So, we must imitate our Heavenly Father. We must walk in love as the Father loves us. And why? Because that is it's the love of God that makes all these other things bring forth their intended fruits or their inten intended result. It really gives life to all of that. And the Apostle Paul points out this thing. He says, look, there will come a time when all these things will pass away. The gifts will cease. It will vanish away. It will no longer be needed. Faith itself will no longer be needed. La hope itself will no longer be needed because you will see the Lord. You will know Him. You will see Him. So even faith and hope will one day be done away with. And there will come a time. There's only one thing that will continue to operate. And that is love. So that's why he says, the greatest of these is love. It's the only thing that will endure. There was love in eternity past. Only in the, when there was only the Godhead, we saw in John 17, the Father loved the Son. There was love in the Godhead. Even before there was faith or hope or any of those things, there was love in the Godhead. Eternity, future, there'll be only one thing. There'll be love. All the other things will pass away. So he says the greatest of these is love. And so the love of God should undergird Every expression of the gifts of the Spirit should undergird are the functions we do, all of that. So walking in love is walking this much better way of serving people. That does not mean we do away with the gifts, but we take that path. And as we walk that path of love, then we express the gifts and fulfill our functions. You all with me so far? Love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. Now many times we use that statement, but we, we don't understand, like, you know, what did Paul actually mean when he said, love never fails? What did he actually mean by that? Love never fails. There are two things that that Greek word for fails implies. The first one is this. It means that we will not get off course. We will not get off track. We will not go down the wrong path. So when you walk in love, you will stay on course. You will be on the right path. Whatever you do, motivated by love, you can be sure of one thing. You will not go down the wrong path if you are being motivated by love. 
The other meaning of that Greek word used there for fails, it means you will not fall down powerless. You will not fall down ineffective. So when you walk this love walk, when you walk the path of love, you will be on the right path, on right course, and you will not be unproductive. You will not go without having an impact, or you will have an impact. So that's what he means when he says, love never fails. You will not go off course, or you will be on the right path, and your life will have impact. So think about this. You know, you and I have many situations in life, whether it's, you know, if you're a single person in school or college, and you have your friends or you know, being mean to you, doing all kinds of wrong things. And you want, you're thinking, how do I react to this? What do I do? Well, choose the way of love. Because love, when you are motivated by love in, in, in your response to them. And this applies to every situation at home, in your family relationships, in your workplace, with, with your colleagues, with your bosses, with your peers, with your subordinates. Uh, depending on, you know, they may say things and do things that may be mean and harmful and hurtful. But you and I make the choice. I'm going to walk the more excellent path of love. Because if I choose this path of love, I know I will not fail. Love never fails. If I choose to do what love will do, I know I will stay on the right path. And I will know I will not fall down powerless. When I choose to walk in love. Love never fails. Then, as we talk about imitating our Heavenly Father, walking in love, we must understand that receiving God's love, receiving His love, expands our capacity to love. When you receive His love, your capacity to love other people expands. If you and I try to love people with our own strength, look, we can only do so much. We have only so much patience, only so much endurance, only so much. But when you receive His love, your capacity to love expands. Romans 5 verses 3 to 5 brings this out for us. Paul writes here, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So he says, look, in life, there are going to be tribulations. <laughs> life is going to have difficulties. So he says, we glory in tribulations. We glory, I mean, even in the hard times. We, we're not down, upset, discouraged. We glory in tribulations. Why? Because we know what this is all ha working towards. Tribulations produces endurance. Uh, or your, your perseverance, your endurance, your ability to stay through time, your stickability. Right? Some of us don't have stickability. <laughs> we don't stick. But tribulations develops your endurance. Endurance builds character. So only when you stick through the stuff, you're going to develop some character. It's like when you're in the pressure cooker, you turn it off, take it out, you get half baked, you get it half cooked. You got to stay in it for the entire time. So, tribulations develops endurance. You stay in that endurance mode for a while. It builds character. And character produces hope, expectation. You say, I've gone through this. Uh, it's too late for me to move back. It's too late for me uh, uh, to turn back. I have hope, expectation of what God said. I know he's coming. I know I'm going to be with him. I have that expectation. I have hope. 
We are people of hope. And then he says, hope does not disappoint us. Or literally, it's like this. Hope does not put us to shame. Not, you know, not going to drop you down and say, oh, sorry, man. That was false hope. Hope will not put us to shame. Hope does not make us feel ashamed. I am not ashamed of the hope that I have. Why? Because right here, right now, at this moment, while I'm going through the tribulation, while my endurance is being developed, while my character is being forged, while my hope is being strengthened, right here, right now, through all of that, the love of God is my experience. The love of God. Is shed abroad in our hearts. That means while I'm going to the pressure cooker, don't feel sorry for me. I'm enjoying the love of God. The love of God is poured into our hearts by His Holy. And it's not a trickle. It's not two or three drops. He says the love of God, literally it says that He floods our hearts. Meaning it's an overflow of it. Shed abroad, literally meaning it's flooding, it's overflowing in our hearts. Oh, I got one drop of God's love. Oh, I feel it. I don't know where it went somewhere. <laughs> no, the love of God floods our hearts by the Holy Spirit is given. So don't feel sorry for me. We glory in tribulations. We glory while our endurance is being developed. We rejoice while our character is being shaped and forged. We rejoice. We have this hope in our hearts. This hope will not shame us because right here and now, we're enjoying the Father's love. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. But it's very interesting. That love is poured into our hearts, not for, just for our own benefit. Yes, for our benefit. But he pours it in an overabounding measure. So that he pours it in our hearts so that we can give that love away. So we not only receive his love, but we love others with his love. So here's something I want to encourage you to do. When you find it difficult or maybe impossible to love somebody... Say this, Father, I release your love to them. Because God is not expecting you to love people with your own strength. He's poured into your heart His love. So let's do this together. Think about all the people you hate and say this with me. <laughs> Father, I release your love to them. Let's do it again. Father, I release your love to them. Father, I love them with your love. Do this anytime. The moment somebody irritates you in the office. The moment somebody gets on your nerves. Do this. Instead of speaking in Hebrew and Greek. Just, just say, Father, I release your love to them. Because the love of God is poured into our hearts in an overflowing measure by His Spirit who is given to us. So release that love. So receiving His love into your heart has actually expanded your capacity to love other people. Because now you love people with His love. Not your own ability. Receiving the Father's love or loving as God loves reveals God. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 12. John writes this. He says, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. So what he's saying, see, no one, no person has seen God in all of his glory. Now, yes, there are people who have encountered God who had different levels of encounters with God and we aren't denying that but nobody has seen God in all of his glory nobody's seen God but he says if we love one another God abides in us 
That means the implication is God is seen in us. No one has seen God, but when you love, they see God in you. See God in you. This is so powerful. I sometimes, uh, I'm not sure whether I should share stories, personal stories, but uh, maybe I'll share this. I was coming back from Calcutta just a few weeks ago. I was coming back from Calcutta. This finished two or three days of meetings there. And on my way to the airport, somebody gave me some money. They gave me a packet, had money in it. Pastor, thank you for being a blessing to us. Take this. So I just put it in my pocket, got on the flight. And it just so happened on the same row where I was sitting, there was another minister of God from Bangladesh. He got in Calcutta. He's coming to Bangalore. He, he works for Campus Crusade. So. <laughs> so he was coming. So we, you know, I was sitting and reading my Bible for a while. And then after some time, he leaned over. He said, oh, are you a Christian? I said, yeah. And then we started talking. A little bit of exchange. But we didn't talk too much. Because he was sitting on the seat beyond me. We just had a little conversation. Then we got off to pick up bags and went to pick up bags. I felt my God, he's a minister of God, a chance to bless him. I hadn't opened the packet, so I don't know how much money was in it. It seemed pretty big. But I said, God, I'm going to give this to him. Right? So I was waiting for the right moment. So as soon as we collected the bags, I asked him, how are you going back? He said, okay, I'm going back this. I said, okay, I'm going like this. Okay, fine. I said, you know, uh, I didn't know how to address him. I said, you know, you're a man of God. You've come from Bangladesh. You're our guest. Uh, I want to bless you with this. Please use this. Use it. You know, do whatever you want. Take something for your family, something. I gave it to him. Bye. Walked away. Now, I, I hadn't left my name, nothing. You know, I didn't really say much. No exchange of business cards. I don't carry business cards these days. So, <laughs> Not, none of that. Uh, just left. Just the simple thing. God Here's a chance to bless another servant of God. That's all. So I gave it to him, walked away, finished. Now I'm through people in Campus Crusade. He found out, got my, he did background search or whatever. He got, this, this past Sunday, he sent a bag. He sent a letter through, letter. In that letter, he said this. We met each other only for 15 minutes. But what you did changed my life. Why am I sharing this testimony? Not, not to boast, but I'm saying this. See, let love be spontaneous. No man has seen God at any time. If we love, God is seen in us. That's it. Just, just that. Now, I, I had no intention of even hearing back from him. I, you know, that was not my intention, nothing. I just, God, my, my sincere desire was God. Here's a servant of God. He's come from Bangladesh. I mean, I don't know what conditions, whatever. But I have a chance to bless him. Let me bless him. But for him, that was God doing something in his life. Amen? So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. That no one has seen God. But when we love, God is revealed through our life. A small glimpse of God. I'm not saying they're going to see God in all His greatness, fullness. No, no. It's a small glimpse of God. But there is a God in heaven who knows me. There's a God in heaven who cares for me. There's a God in heaven who knows my need. Or whatever that might, may, have, may mean to that person. God is seen in our lives. Amen? So loving as God loves reveals God to people. In that same verse, now I just want to make, let, in, in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, I just want to, just, this is a little sidetrack. I will come back to our main message. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, Malachi, the prophet Malachi says this, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Now this is a very important and I want to apply this both in terms of the family and in terms of the local church family. He's speaking of the end times, meaning he's speaking of our day and time. He says, in the last days, I will send Elijah the prophet. What is God trying to accomplish? 
I want to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Lest I strike the earth with a curse. Think about that. God is saying this, this connection between fathers to the children and the children to the fathers is so important. If that connection doesn't happen, earth will be struck with a curse. But if it does happen, the converse is true, which means there is a place of blessing. So, apply this to our homes. Fathers, when the love of God is seen in our lives, it reveals God to our children. And there's a place of blessing. When the heart of the father is towards the children, and the heart of the children is towards the father. In the absence of that, there is a curse, but there's a blessing. And I want us to pursue the blessing. Same thing about the church family. The local church is also a family, which means those of us who are, have been in the Lord, we are fathers and mothers in the house of God. When we have people who come into the church, you know, they may come up with their punk head, Painted purple and orange and green, whatever. They come, they come with, you know, they come, I'm just making fun, but the point is, they may come in uh, however they are. But it's our duty as fathers and mothers for our hearts to be towards them. Amen? Not to reject them, but to welcome them. Or if you want to use the word prodigals, when they come to the church, don't look down on them. Our heart must be towards them because there's a place of blessing. If we reject them, he said that it opens the door to a curse. But we must love them. So I want to encourage us, those of us who've been in, 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 the, in the who are in the church family, and we've, you know, we're a little more older, we mature. Let us be fathers and mothers. When we see prodigals, when we see children, uh, sons and daughters coming in, you know, okay, whatever, however they come in. Our hearts must be towards them. Not to reject them, but to welcome them. Because there is a place of blessing. And when we love as God loves, God is seen in our lives. In that same verse in 1 John 4, 12, I'm getting ready to close. Two more thoughts and we close. Loving as God loves expands our revelation of his love. He says in 1 John 4, 12, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and something else happens. His love has been perfected in us. That word perfected means to come to its full measure. To achieve its intended purpose. To accomplish its intended purpose. His love fulfills its purpose. His love grows to its full measure inside of us. So when we love other people, our revelation of his love also expands. So when you love somebody, say, God, I'm finding it really difficult to love this person, but because your love is poured in my heart, I'm going to love him. I'm going to love him. When you love him, your experience, your understanding, your revelation of God's love also becomes that much bigger. Amen? So how can you and I expand our revelation of God? Stretch yourself. Try to love as God loves. Stretch yourself. And say, God, I'm not going to do this by myself because your love is in my heart. But as I love, what will happen? As I, as I love more, as I love more, what will happen? Your revelation of the Father's love will also increase. His love will be perfected in you. You understanding this? The best way to experience, to have a greater revelation of His love is to love as He loves. Just go on. And your revelation of His love will also increase. Last thought that I want to share this morning on imitating the Father. And this is very powerful. Walking in love is walking in union with God. First John 
And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Think about this. He who abides in love. We've talked about that last Sunday. That means you live out of that love. He who abides in love. He who lives in love. It says God lives in him and he lives in God. I like the Good News Bible puts it like this. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love. And those who live in love live in union with God. And God lives in union with them. Those who live in love live in union with God. Now, we all know math. A union. B. Two union seven is? Oh, come on, guys. Two union seven equals nine. Both together, right? <laughs> come on, guys, please. <laughs> okay, let's build on this further. <laughs> two union ten is? Right? Two and ten together. It's union. It's together. Now think about this. Two union infinity. How much? He who lives in love lives in union with God. And God lives in union with him. Wow. This is what the Bible is saying. That when you walk in love, when you love as God loves, you are in union with God. And God is in union with you. Which means you are undefeatable. All of hell can collect themselves against you. Add all the people of the earth together also if you want. <laughs> they can all come against you. But they're no match for you. Because you are in union with God. And God is in union with you. You're unstoppable. You're undefeatable. There are no words to describe this. This union. When we walk in. That's what the Bible is saying. He who lives in love lives in union with God. God lives in union with him. That's the kind of person you become when you walk in love. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can shake you. Nothing can pull you down. Nothing can destroy you. Because you are in union with God. When you walk in love. Amen. So. The father's love. Let's learn. To rest. In the father's love. Abide in that love. But also let's imitate our father. Let's live out. Of that love. To people. When you walk in that love, God is revealed in your life. When you walk in that love, your revelation of that love increases. And when you walk in that love, you walk in union with God. Amen. Just going to call our worship team up. We'll take a few minutes. Just to pray. And let God just touch our hearts, our lives this morning. I want you to open your heart this morning towards God and say, God, all that I've heard in these last six Sundays, we've talked about the love of God, the love of the Father. Help me, God. 
to receive it and to walk in it. I want it to be a way of life for me. I want it I want to be motivated, guided, and governed by the love of God. I want it to be spontaneous. I want to just overflow from my heart. Father, we invite you, Father God, and your in our lives this morning to miracles, work wonders. Change our hearts. Heal our hearts. Help us to be people who will walk in this love. Help us to be people.
Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve, you deserve all the glory. You deserve, you deserve all the glory, God. Oh, all the honor. Oh, yes, Lord, we worship you. You are great. for your needs right now just pray for your needs especially for your own healing if there's healing in your body if you want the Lord Jesus to touch and heal you right now I want you to just by faith place your hand on the part of your body you want Jesus to heal if you can do that just put your hand there say Jesus you are great you do miracles are great I receive my healing I receive my hand. I just want to pray specially, specifically for heart conditions. If you've been, if the doctors told you that you have a heart problem, that they need to work on it, and that's fine. But I just believe right now, God wants to heal that condition. So I want you to just lay your hand on your chest. So Lord, I know the doctors have said what they have to say. But right now, I receive your healing. I receive your healing for my heart condition. Whatever that problem is, whatever that abnormality is, whatever that issue is, I receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that problem with your heart, those heart conditions to be healed by the power of God. Receive that healing. Receive that healing. Lay your hand on your heart. Just say, God, I receive it. When I go back to the doctor, they're going to say something has happened. A miracle has taken place. God heals you right now. Thank you, Father God. Father, we just pray for problems in the body. In the name of Jesus, let your healing power flow right now in this place. The miracles so great. God, for those who are, like we heard a testimony, if you have a problem in your abdominal area stomach area receive healing right now just put your hand there say God I receive my healing right now in the name of Jesus I receive my healing I receive my healing gallbladder to see my healing right now I receive my healing now you go home or you go to the doctor get yourself checked and let them give you a report that something has happened God has done a miracle in your body we thank you, Father. Thank you. Now I break every sickness, every disease. I remove it out of your body in the authority of the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be made whole. We thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you. Let's just sing that one more time. Let me be close, please. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.